the experiences you'll never forget, the lives you've saved, the camaraderie you've built along the way, from the impact of one individual to the legacy of an entire department. These are stories that need to be told. Responder Media asked fire and rescue professionals to share memorable moments from their careers. These are their stories. I've lived in Newbold for almost 20 years and it's just part of the community. I need to you know, give back to what they've given to us. I think what motivated me to be a part of the Newbold Fire Department was um, probably just a, a desire to get one to give back to the community, um, two to better myself as a person and responding the actual act of putting out a fire the whole thing is just one giant adrenaline rush. It actually wasn't anything that was ever on my radar screen. Uh, a couple of my friends are on the department and they said you know you should pull your weight you should join up and my response was after surviving 29 years of law enforcement it seems really silly to go into a burning building and they said you don't need to go into a burning building. There's all kinds of roles that we have that need to be filled. We don't have fire hydrants. Would you be willing to drive a tanker and bring us water? But yeah, I can do that. The calls that I've been to, I, I think to myself, I can't imagine if that happened to me. And you know, thinking that makes me really, um, really want to do the best that I can do and, and save as much as I can save and you know, provide that for, for everybody in town. The word volunteer to some people just means we go when we want to but that's, that's really not the, the case with the fire department. You volunteer to belong, but you make a commitment to be a firefighter. People don't realize the training that the volunteer departments go through. We have as much training as career departments, and people don't realize that. They think that you just come out here, hop in a truck and drive down the road with your lights and siren going. We have to meet the same standards that a paid department in a city does. The only thing is we're not getting paid. You know, it's not our daytime job. Um, this is something we do extra above and beyond what we do every day to make a living. In uh, February, it was about 15 below zero. It was a, a mobile home um, that was burning and uh, we were there most of the night because it was it had, the, had a roof put over, two roofs put over the top of it and we couldn't get through and equipment was freezing and people's turnout gear was freezing. If they stood still too long, they're, they're, they would be stiff, they couldn't hardly move. We had a, a house that was engulfed and it was really warm out. And I remember the first thing I did was jumped in full gear in the heat and you realize how hot and heavy those things are. And I spent the time running back and forth with hoses and running for water and just assisting the firefighters as they came out. I was on the ambulance with a couple other EMTs and it was a new bold township call and we got called to a 14 year old boy with a gunshot wound. It was an elderly female that got trapped in her cabin. The cabin caught fire. The gentleman that was supposedly DOA actually was alive and I was on scene for, for what probably was only a few minutes by myself, but seemed like an eternity. Fighting the fire on the car and the airbags pop and throw me about 10 feet backwards, just out of reaction. Um, and tumbled, tumbled the person uh, who was supporting me behind me on the line and got back up and went right back at it. Just the coordination and the teamwork that went together on that call to uh, make it come off when uh, it was as bad as it was. A team of people coming together when things are going really bad and you bring order and redemption to chaos. And to see these men and women on this department go out and sometimes risk life and limb to protect property and sometimes save people's lives, it's a, it's a neat thing to be a part of. And we get up at all hours of the night to respond to those calls. Some are as simple as, you know, a, a smell of smoke, which may be nothing, a light ballast or something, and, and some are actual fires, um, but we respond to all of them the same um, because we care. We care about our community and we care about our, our fellow citizens. We have a great community as far as support goes. Uh, we have a good town board that always supports us and the citizens are pretty supportive. When departments do fundraisers, it's nice to see the community come out and you know have a good time, but also pitch in so that we can buy, buy the equipment that we need. Community support is vital. So any way people can stop by and help out and just get involved is great. Whether it be as, on the, as a full firefighter that comes in response to calls or someone that is able to be a, a backup person that uh, perhaps helps with pumping water from a lake into a truck. I think the first step would be to uh, join me to a monthly meeting. Uh, see what the meeting's about. Um, see what we talk about. And usually, you know, if it's somebody who's really interested, I think they're going to grab on and want to go. The thing that I like most about being a firefighter is doing something positive for somebody. 
that I, I don't even know. You know, I haven't had a situation where we rolled into something and then we we left uh, them worse for wear. You know, we've always made some sort of positive difference, and that's uh, that's what really motivates me. Seeing the looks on people's faces, I mean, like after. EMS calls when you have the families coming up and thanking you for helping their mother or father or son or daughter. One of the last fires, uh, the lady who just lost a huge part of their property came around and personally shook hands to every firefighter and thanked them for the work. And she was doing it through teary eyes, but she was still grateful. But there'll be times when you go home and you feel like you're the closest thing to Superman. And there's times where some of the stuff you see just makes you want to cry, but uh, at the end of the day, it's all worth it. If you don't tell your story, who will? Find out how Responder Media can help by calling for a free consultation.